Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's everything in bloom on the 8th. On the 8th? There's a novelty. <laughs> not forgotten, not missed. Actually on the 8th, where it should be. And hopefully will be, you know, for the following months. Um, I haven't got a huge amount in bloom. And um, strictly speaking, to get some nice close-ups on a dull day like this, I ought to get my gadget out. But um, there is a bother factor. And I can't be. <laughs> so sorry about that, um, but that's how it's going to be. Uh, I need to whip round relatively quickly. I'm in the middle of doing something else that I've just broken off from. And um, it's time's getting on in the day. I'm going to lose the light completely in the not too distant future. So I wanted to get this done. So uh, we'll go round normal way. And I'll say I'll apologise if anything's a bit blurry, but um, that gadget would be... Uh, the mood I'm in now, I'd end up throwing it through a window or something. I'm not in the mood to play games with a gadget that's not behaving itself. So we've still got the, the Vanda, uh, blah, 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 Vanda. We've still got the Mastervalia Hybrid that's um, lasting incredibly well. It's a beautiful coloured bloom. And um, pity the plant doesn't actually match up to it, but it doesn't. It's um, struggling. Nonetheless, it's got a bloom on it. Oh, so that's that one. Oh, I'm going to have to stop crashing down like that for a bit. Um, we've still got the um, Tahitian Dancer. This is still looking good. Um, quite honestly, this would have been a good show to have actually staked four, st four um, spikes quite upright. Um, because I've got one arching right down here, one a bit below it, one in the middle of the plant, and one heading up towards the window up the back. So there's actually four spikes on there. If those had all been clustered relatively close together, for once, it would have looked better. Because I'm not too keen on staked spikes. Right, the next one has got one bloom just opened, and I'm going to have to get it down. Now, this is Lelonia, which is a cross between a Lelia and a Brautonia, which some of you may have never heard of. Um, all in the, Both in the Catlia Alliance. But... Um, I've got to find somewhere to put it now. Because uh, I'll never hold it still enough to film. Let me try it there. See if I can get it. Because I need the, the bloom's pointing the wrong way at the moment. I need to try and get the bloom to point towards us. That's too high up, I suspect. We will try. We need to get it still. So I'll try and put my finger on it and get it to stay still for a bit. And then hopefully I can hold the camera above it and we can get to look at that. Very, very attractive blooms. Um, delicate, uh, pale magenta or lilac with a lovely dark centre. Um, obviously it's going to look an awful lot better when that particular cluster of blooms are all open. Because I think we've got three, four, five, six, there, there's seven blooms on that cluster. So that's going to look good when they're all open. And then we've got these coming on behind as well. So that's that one. That's actually Lelonia Joyce Hilton. It's its registered name. Um, all right, let me put that back because it's now in the way to get at the next one. I mean, I'm well organised today, aren't I? <laughs> Never thought to get these down beforehand, did I? Duh. <laughs> right, because the next one lives up here. Now this is one of the plants that came from Jeff's. And I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I will put pop-ups as I usually do. But if I can get this to stay still, perhaps we can have a nice look at this. Um, a bit of a colour changer, because when, um, when it first opened, I, I didn't think much of it, quite honestly. And um, since then, it's actually got darker, and it is a much nicer orange. And the actual lip has gone a much deeper yellow with some lovely spotting on. So, uh, whereas I wasn't too keen on that when it first opened, I've actually got to like it more. But these are quite small blooms. They're not very large, but they're still attractive. Yeah, they're still attractive. So that was one of the ones from Jeff's. Um, we only have one Tolumnia bloom open at the moment. Chances of focusing on that are pretty slim. Let me try touching it. Let me try touching it accurately, shall we? Somewhere like that. Now I should be able to go in a bit closer. Again, this spi uh, spike has already bloomed 
and then it branched and the branch had a bloom on. Um, this will be the last bloom, it will be gone after this one and it can uh, go back up the top with the rest. But um, yeah, an attractive bloom, lovely deep red and some yellow, so nice colours. So that's that one. And then if we come down here we've got the, uh, this is a, a named twinkle in effect, it's uh, Oh, what's it called? It's, uh, I'll put a pop up. <laughs> it's something like, um, no, I've forgotten. <laughs> it's completely gone. But um, nonetheless, um, very delicate pink blooms with a deep yellow center. So um, twinkle shape, typical twinkle shape, but effectively a twinkle crossed back with sotoannum. So uh, very fragrant and looking very nice. Now my little Cattleya cernua is down to its last official bloom and even though that's on a cluster of three, two of them are going over. So we've, we've literally down to the very, very last, let's see if I can touch that one and get it to focus. Come on camera, you can do it. Yes, you can. There we go. So that's Cattleya cernua. That's its last bloom for the year. Um, and once the leaves have matured, see they're a deep green naturally, the new growths that have bloomed are a nice pale uh, green, so you can see the new growths on there quite distinctly. And um, what will happen now is those pale green leaves will deepen until they get to that colour, at which point the plant is fully mature for the year, and then it will do nothing absolutely nothing for about six months. It'll just sit there and do nothing. I don't drown it while it's doing nothing, obviously. <laughs> it's not going to use it, is it? And there's not even a lot of point in chucking feed on it when it's, it's effectively just goes dormant, um, but obviously doesn't drop its leaves. It holds its leaves for many, many, many years. But um, yeah, so it'll do nothing for a very, very long time. So that would not be a good plant to have as a project plant, would it? <laughs> You can sit there and do nothing for six months. <laughs> uh, oh, look at it this month. It's exactly the same as it was three months ago. So we won't do that. So that's that one. Uh, nothing much else up around that area. Right, so I'm going to have to hold the camera right up in the air now. So I'll twist the, twist the screen over and we'll get up there. And we'll have a look at this lovely bright orange cap there. And that is Young Min Orange, that one I do remember. It has a memory, that's why I remember it. It was, um, it was got at the Norfolk Orchid Congress national sort of event. And it was the last time I saw Chantel, lovely um, seller based in the UK, but plants came from abroad. I think they came from Carter and Home, something like that in the States, um, mainly Catlias. And I wanted a memory of her before she packed in her business and went to Australia. So uh, that, that's a memory for me. Um, and it's, it's a nice cluster, small, uniform orange, but as a cluster, looks very nice. And um, we've got an even bigger, better cluster coming here. Notice if you look at the blooms as the buds open, they're yellow. Deep orange. That's the amount of colour changing. It opens a very, almost yellow, the palest of oranges, and then gets deeper as time goes on. So uh, that's that one. Oh, it's making my arm ache holding it up there. <laughs> down to earth again. Right, I'll come down here. Um, this is not a good blooming. It's a sad plant at the moment compared with last year. But my BC Make A has actually got three blooms on it. I'm not even sure this one's going to even open properly. The plant is very badly dehydrated on the grounds that it's lost its roots. So I'm waiting for new growths and roots to form to actually get this plant going again, which it will do. Um, but nonetheless, it, you know, it's not going to damage the plant having a spike with three buds on. So uh, not looking as good as it has done in the past, but um, not bad. I mean, they are attractive blooms. Um, so that's that one. Oh, when you kneel down on this floor, <laughs> you get a pattern on your knee that looks exactly like one of those squares. <laughs> Not so good. Right, let's see if we can get a close up on the cymbidium. Now, something wrong this year on this plant. Um, 
I hate to say what I think it is, because if it is, we've got a serious problem in here. But I think if it is what I think it is, I, I'd have actually seen the results. What I've got is marks on the buds, yeah? Now, they seem to be coming from the inside out. There is only one thing I know of that gets inside of buds, and it's thrips. And if I've got thrips in here, we've got a flipping problem. Um, so I'm not sure. I, effectively, their adult stage is a flying insect. Now, I've got those little fungus gnats in here. A thrip is quite a bit bigger than that. And it's more wasp-shaped, I would say, rather than... Um, like circular, a little circular sort of fly. Um, they are quite distinctive. And um, I think if there were any adults in here, I'd have seen them. I, you know, I spend a fair bit of time in here. But nonetheless, at first I thought we had a muncher, which could have been a slug, like there, because that's, that's been chewed. That is actual holes. Um, but then there are marks on the blooms and some of them are holes now maybe they always were holes but where the buds were closed you couldn't see them because the petals and sepals would have been effectively one on top of the other so they may not have showed but um i mean that's the color of it it's a it is an attractive cymbidium i must admit um it's the only one i've got it's the only one i'll ever have um but there is a problem this year with the blooming they're um Say so that's just not not quite right. There's something got at them. And as I said, I just hope it isn't thrips. Oh now I've got to get up again. Ow. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh, we shouldn't be doing that really. Right, so that's that lot over that side. Let me just get get this one back up where it goes because it's in my way. You go back up there in the bright light. Bright lights, bright. Right, then we're coming over here, we have Tiny Twinkle, um, that's his name, and um, this, I need to get on and get this photograph done, again I'm waiting for a decent light, um, but that's going to be my entry into the um, virtual table display competition for January, because I haven't got much else, so that's what it's going to be, good, bad or indifferent. It's not a bad looking plant, and it's not a bad blooming for a twinkle. Um, so that's that one. Um, reliable plant this one. It's been growing for me for a very very long time. It's grown into a good sized um, miniature oncidium plant and as twinkles go because the plant is a miniature twinkle but the blooms are the same size as normal twinkles the blooms look bigger relative to the plant size. So uh, that one works well. Then coming over here, we still have the um, Dendrobium alexandrae. The fact that this is still in bloom is quite not much short of a miracle. These blooms have been open an incredibly long time. Um, Alien-like, and um, I'd say probably that's the nearest bloom to Spectaboli. Dendrobium spectabile, which I also have, or I have now, it's a recent sort of uh, acquisition. But um, very attractive shape, irrespective of the colours. The colours are fading now. Um, blooms have been out quite a long time. The, uh, let's see, what, if I get the cernia out of the way, then we can, have, at least, we're not supposed to do buds, but as it's related sort of thing in such a, such a way, that's the uh, spike coming on the um, spectabile. So uh, we will see those in the not too distant future. They are similar to the one we've just looked at. That's the one that I broke the spike off of. <laughs> and then as if by a miracle, within a day or two, another one appeared. Not in the same place, but it hides under the leaf. And then it's not until it sort of pokes out the end of the leaf that you even see it. And it's already that long. So anyway, that's progressing. Uh, that's got five buds on it, so that should look quite nice when that comes out. Right, unfortunately my Dendrobium Victoria Regina has now finished. But again, that lasted very well, and I wasn't expecting it to bloom. So that's a bonus. The um, Phalaenopsis type Dendrobium, Tie Angel, the first bloom is collapsing. 
So that's on a limited number of days now. But yet again, that has been open absolutely ages. And um, that is a very attractive bloom. Very attractive. I like it a lot. So that's that one. That flower spike is dead. I think that's the first Oncidium type in, well, Oncidium into generic that I've ever had, where the blooms can actually die and don't fall on the floor. That whole spike is dead. <laughs> I think you might just be able to, just about say that that one's still hanging in there. Just. <laughs> Possibly that one as well. Uh, but it's on its way out now, so uh, that plant won't, won't be up on that shelf for much longer. Um, over here, and this is going to be hard to film, um, the yellow twinkle has just opened its first bloom. So let me see if I can touch that one and get that one to lock on. Missed. Somewhere near it. Possibly. I can't see what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, the yellow twinkle is, is opening. You can see a couple of blooms behind the one that's actually open. Um, that's nice. Again, lovely fragrance. And um, the last of the twinkles. Um, once the, these yellow ones have gone, there won't be any more for another year. Well, probably nine, nine to ten months, because we did have some earlier, didn't we? And then the cinnamon twinkle. Again, very attractive. Um, nice colour. And the cinnamon twinkle has a different fragrance. This one is... It's a bit more chocolatey than just vanilla -y. Uh, technical terms those are. <laughs> I'm not very good at describing fragrances, I must admit. Um, right, up here is Dendrobium canico. It's just opened a single bloom. Um, hasn't bloomed for a while, it's had a bit of a break, a bit of a rest. Um, oh, I'm holding this above my head again, I'll make my arm ache. Um, Good job I didn't have the stabiliser as well. I wouldn't have been able to hold it up there for any length of time. Um, anyway, that is a Victoria Regina cross with Gold Schmittianum, I believe. Um, so primary cross. And it blooms on and off forever, just permanently. So that's that one. And then uh, last but not least is uh, Lelia Anseps. And... Um, I'm not sure how much longer these blooms are going to last, quite honestly, but um, they have done very well. And um, it is still my favourite Catlia bloom. I've never quite been able to say exactly why, but it, it just is something to do with the way that those stripes and spots in that lip, the shape of the lip itself, the colours on the inside, it's just something about this one. Um, just catches my eye every time I see one. And its shape, you know, it's a nice uniform shape. So only four blooms this year, but uh, that's better than none, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. The only other things that are in bloom, there are a couple of um, Restrepias, but I'm not getting in and digging them out. I really would have a job to focus on them without the uh, stabiliser or tripod. So that's it. That's what's in bloom at the moment. There are not a lot of other plants to come in the near future. There are some more cattleya buds around. Um, so they'll follow on. Not much else though. But in the not too distant future, we'll have um, this one. Latoria type. And... One of my noblies, the buds are starting to show. So this is pushed away from the cane enough to form two buds. And this is my critical point. This is the point at which I start increasing watering and start introducing some low feed. When they're just nubbins, I don't bother. But at the moment, that plant is now having to expend energy to produce large flamboyant blooms and lots of them so it's going to need to get that energy from somewhere so rather than drain the canes trying to do it because I'm not helping I'd rather help so that's this is the point that's that point that I call the critical point when the buds leave the cane and start to show 
and that's when I start uh, getting getting the plant going again and getting used to it. Uh, getting used to having a bit more water and some very low level feed. You know, in a month's time, it'll be back up to being fed and watered. I don't care what the time of year is. I know it's still the middle of winter, but this plant is blooming early. So that's what it's going to get. So, uh, right then, that's that. Everything in bloom on the 8th. And um, one shoulder ache. <laughs> uh, I'll live. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.